Hey everyone! Today I'm going to be sewing a Cindy bra, but I'm going to be sewing it as a swimsuit top, and I'm going to be making a few alterations. So this is one that I sewed last summer that I have worn a lot. Um, so on this one I've altered the cup. I don't know if I'm going to do that this time, but basically all I did is I cut off that tab. I'm going to be adding self straps that are adjustable and I'm omitting the center back piece and I'm substituting it with these three straps that have elastic inside so they're nice and supportive. Um, so this is what I'm sewing today and I'm going to just walk you through the different steps and some of the pattern changes, or not pattern changes, but um, material substitutions that you might want to make um, if you're going to sew this for yourself. So I've cut out my pieces in the 30 double D size. So I'm just gonna bring these over here. Okay, so I've done my upper cup in my exterior, exterior fabric and swimsuit lining. And I've done the same for my two lower cup pieces. Um, you might find that if you have um, a bust that has more projection, you might want to add a little bit of fullness um, along this cup seam here, just on either side. Um, and you, you'll need to just elongate your upper cup as well, just to add a little bit of extra fullness there. So that's one pattern alteration you might want to make to add a little bit of extra fullness to the cup. But that's something you'll determine when you do your mock-up, which I highly, highly recommend with this sewing pattern, just because um, any underwire bra pattern, um, you're likely going to want to make some kind of fit alteration to it. So moving on to the band, I've cut the band out of my self fabric and power mesh. So you could also add a, line, um, a layer of lining as well, but I'm just doing mine out of the, the Lycra and the power mesh. So there's my center front. Um, another common pattern alteration you might want to make is to uh, make this center front piece a little bit more narrow. Um, I think that uh, this tends to be on the wider side on my pattern, um, partially because that's how it fits best on me. So, so I've made it a little bit wider, but you might want to make that narrower. Again, you'll decide that after you sew your mock-up. Um, here is my side front band in the self and my power mesh. And then my side back, same thing in, me in my self and power mesh. So those are all of my pieces. I'm just gonna kind of move the band pieces aside. And then the other thing I've done is I've cut some strips of my swimsuit fabric so that the stretch is going lengthways along it. And I've cut these about an inch and a half wide. So this is going to be my binding for the uh, top and bottom of my swimsuit top. Um, and you can also use that for your straps, for your shoulder straps and the straps along the back. So now that I've just touched quickly on the uh, fabrics that you're going to need to cut out, I also wanted to mention some other supplies that you're going to need. Um, so you'll need some long underwires. So I bought these at Bra Maker Supply um, and I specifically bought the long ones, but you can also cut yours to size. Um, you're going to need some swimsuit elastic, which this I also got at, um, I keep calling it Bra Maker Supply, but I know that their website now is Bra and Corset Supplies. So it's just um, a plain rubber elastic that I'm going to use and some underwire channeling. So it's just plush on one side and it's um, basically a casing that your underwire will get fed through. Um, and aside from that, I am also going to use a twin needle, um, and you can get these at any sewing supply store. The basic construction of the Cindy swimsuit top is very similar um, to the construction of the bra, um, but in this instance I'm going to line the cups. So I'm going to line it exactly how I always line my cups, which is in one motion. So what I've done here is I've got, um, this is the the front, the center front cup and the side front cup. I'm going to put them right side together. 
And then on top of that, I'm going to take the center front lining and lay it on top of my center front self. And then right sides together, the lining, the side front lining goes against the center front lining. There, and just line that up. And I'm going to serge my seams. You could also use a zigzag stitch if you don't have a serger. Um, another thing to note with this bra pattern is it does have a half inch seam allowance, which is uh, larger um, than normal for a bra pattern. Um, the reason I've done that is just to make it so that if you're a, a new sewer, um, sometimes it's a little bit easier when you've got that extra allowance in case you make a mistake. Okay, so when I open that up, The lining or the seam allowance is encased between the lining and the exterior fabric. So I would do the exact same thing on the opposite cup, um, but for now I'm going to move on to the upper cup. So the right sides together, I'm going to pin this along here lining up all of your notches. You kind of have to ease this area together. This um, this is where a lot of the shaping of the cups, the cup comes from, is this horizontal seam. Okay, and then flipping it over I'm going to take my lining and it gets, I'm going to pin it along here. So exactly the same as our first step, um, this encases the seam allowance between the two layers. So you might want to stitch this first with your sewing machine to kind of baste everything in place or you can just go ahead and run it through your serger. Okay. So there it is from the inside. There's our seam allowance and then you flip the lining up and it's so nicely finished on the inside and the outside. We've basically lined our cup all in one step. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that exact same process on the opposite side and then we're gonna move on to do a little bit of decorative top stitching. So I've just finished assembling my two cups. Um, here they are here. And now I'm going to just quickly put together the band. So I've got my center front band here. Um, I've laid it on top of a piece of power mesh. Um, and I'm going to take my side front band, um, the exterior fabric only, and put it right sides together, then flip it over so I'm looking at the power mesh side. I'm going to take the piece of power mesh that I've cut using my side front band pattern piece and lay it over top and I'm just going to stitch down here. So exact same as with our cup, this encases the lining between the two layers. So it prevents the lining and the exterior layer from slipping while you're wearing it. So these can get quite slippery. If you've never sewn with swimsuit fabric before, you might want to baste things together. I highly recommend that. Um, otherwise, use lots of pins. There's our first side, and then the same process for the other half. So right side together down that little front seam, and then flip it over, and the lining gets placed against the lining side.
Now working with my side back piece. So right sides together down that side seam and flip it over. And my lining goes right sides together down that side seam and stitch in place. So the actual assembly of this goes together pretty quick when you're doing it with this method, with this type of lining method. So there's my assembled band and my two assembled cups. So I'm going to switch over to my straight stitch sewing machine now and I'm going to do some decorative top stitching and then we get to move on to um, adding the cups into the band. So I switched over to my straight stitch machine for the rest of the assembly of this bra. Um, so right now I'm going to do some decorative top stitching. Um, this is totally um, an optional step, but I just think it gives it a nice finish. So what I'm going to do is all of my, I'm going to top stitch over top of all of my seam allowances. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that my lining and my exterior fabric are um, lined up nicely. And I'm stitching maybe a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch away from the seam line. And I'm just using a, I'm actually using a straight stitch. You might want to use um, a very slight zigzag stitch as well. So I've just top stitched along that upper cup seam and it goes right through both sides. So I would do the same thing on that cup and I'm also going to top stitch over the seam allowances in the band as well. Um, so the other thing you might want to do before you do this is add some boning at this side seam. Um, I'm not going to do that because I like a lighter fit. I don't need, I don't like, um, I always find that boning jabs me no matter what I do, so I'm going to omit that step. Um, but when you omit the boning, you do um, tend to run into more uh, folding of the bra. The top stitching is just decorative. Um, like I said earlier, it's totally optional. You don't have to do it, um, but it's quick and easy. And I feel like it gives it a nice finish and helps everything lie nice and flat because the seams can get a little thick with the swimsuit fabric and your lining and the power mesh and everything. There we go. Um, I'm hoping you can see here. So I've stitched just through all the layers on top of the seam allowance. And here I'm wishing I should have um, top stitched this seam before I sewed on my upper cup. Um, but since I forgot to do that, I'm just going to really quickly, I'm gonna fake it. No 
one will ever know that I forgot there. So that's what my cup looks like now, if you can see. There we go. So I'm gonna finish up the top stitching on my other cup and then we're going to insert the cups into the bra. Okay, so all of my top stitching is done and now we get to what I feel is the trickiest part of the bra construction, which is um, sewing the cup into the bra um, or into the band. So this part does require quite a few pins because you need to kind of ease everything in. Oh, and one thing I am going to do beforehand because I always skip this step and then I curse myself for it, I'm going to baste. I'm actually going to baste using my sewing machine just to keep my layers from slipping. actually going to practice what I preach for once. There. Then the other place I'm just going to baste, I'm going to baste my upper cup and lining together just along this neckline seam. And this will just hold everything together while I'm working on it. So I'm running my stitching about three eighths of an inch in. Doesn't really matter because your basting stitches can be removed at the end. They're just to hold everything in place. So there we go, back on track. So again, you're gonna need lots of pins and with the right sides together, you're going to just start easing these together. And um, like I mentioned earlier, there is a half an inch seam allowance here, which um, kind of does make it a little more difficult to ease together. So I'm lining up my notches and my seams kind of using that as a guide as I go. So this is kind of tricky. It's like setting in a, um, a sleeve. You really need to kind of um, just ease it together. And I'm just using a straight stitch.
So I am a speed sewer. And even I find this to be a challenging area because I don't sew a lot of underwire bras. So actually, some of you might find this easier than I do. So there it is on the inside. And on the outside, just make sure that you don't have any puckers um, in your cup. You can actually run a basting stitch just along your the lower edge of your cup. This is something I do when I'm setting in sleeves often. And just pull on your bobbin thread like you're going to gather. And it will just really gently shrink back that area. You don't want to actually gather it. You just want to pull on your bobbin thread to, um, to tighten this area up so that it's easier to ease in. So if you're having a lot of difficulty, this is a nice, um, a, tr a good trick. Anytime you need to ease two pieces together. So you can see that that has started to kind of form that into place already. So there's a notch mark to line up your horizontal cup seam. And then there's a double notch on the side cup that matches up with the double notch on the band, the side band. And line up your vertical seams and just keep going around that way. tell I'm going to have a pucker there I'm going to have to fix. So if you do get a pucker, you don't need to take out the entire seam. Just pick the stitches um, on the pucker and around the pucker and sometimes you can just kind of flatten it out that way. So I'm just going to look and see. Oh, no, no puckers, which is like a miracle for me. I always, <laughs> I always get puckers. So there we go. It's basically starting to come together at this point. Um, now I'm ready to do my underwire channeling. And then we just get on to doing all the binding and the finishing. So I'm going to be working with this underwire channeling. Um, mine has a plush side and a non-plush side. So the plush side is going to be my right side. And I'm going to sew it um, onto my seam allowance, um, working from the band side. I basically am going to apply this right along that row of stitching that I just did to attach my cup together. So again, this is getting stitched to the seam allowance only. So here's my stitching line. The edge of my channeling is running basically on top of that. And you want to stitch just along the edge 
You want to make sure you've got space left for your underwire to go into, into the channeling. So there it is, it's stitched just onto this seam allowance. And then we need to cut back all of this extra seam allowance. I trim it back to um, about a quarter of an inch. So this does get pretty bulky along this line, this seam line. So trimming back the fabric only, not your, um, not your underwire casing. There. So that is how that's looking. Um, I'm just gonna jump ahead and baste my underwire casing onto the opposite cup now. So I've stitched the casing onto both sides of my cups, just onto the seam allowance. And now I'm going to press it up towards the cup and I'm going to just stitch it in place. So I'm stitching along this loose edge. Stitch about an eighth of an inch in or less if you can. Um, you just want it to be consistent and even. You can see I'm kind of pulling it this way because um, I want my seam line to be nice and tight and nice and flat. So there it is from the front, um, your stitching line along there, and on the inside you've got this plush casing that your underwire is going to go into. So I'm just going to finish the stitching on this opposite side. So it's really starting to look like something now. <laughs> and there it is from the inside, it's nice and neat on the inside. Um, I'm going to take my underwire now and I'm going to slide them into my casings. So I've slid my underwires into my casings um, and I'm just deciding whether I'd like to cut off these tabs. And I think I will to give the cup more of a rounded top. Um, so it's a really easy alteration to make. I'm literally just going to just gonna snip them off and round off that cup. So I'm just gonna fold it in half now to make sure that the upper cups are basically the same, which they look to be. So the next step is going to be to finish um, these uh, raw edges along the back and then add a binding along the top and the bottom. 